Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to do a few different concepts of how the parallelogram may be asked. Now you already know the qualities of a parallelogram and if in a rider, so in other words in a question like this, this is what we call riders. If in a rider they give you information that says like in this one they say DEFG is a parallelogram. Then it means that any fact that you know that is linked to a parallelogram, you can immediately put it in. Okay, so in this case, what do we know? You know that the opposite sides are parallel. You know that the opposite sides are equal. You don't have diagonals in that graph, so you're not going to use this rule. You know that the opposite angles, opposite angles are equal. One side is equal and parallel. These are all rules you know of a parallelogram. So as soon as they tell me, hey, it's a parallelogram, that means you can put in that it's parallel. You can put in that it's equal. Any information that you know, you can put it in. Now, since it is parallel, what can you tell me about D plus E? D plus E is going to equal to 180 degrees. Why? It is co-interior angles. But how do you know it's co-interior angles? Because DF is parallel to EG. Now, how did I decide that? If you look, I am looking specifically at this C, which means that the two parallel lines have to be these two, and that is DF and EG. Now, if D is 2X and E is X, then I have that 3X is equal to 180 degrees and X is equal to 60 degrees. So when they say determine the size of x, if this is the equation, then you know, okay, I will simply use the rule of the parallel lines. But you could only use the parallel lines because they gave you parallelograms. Let's look at the next one. Right, let us look at the following rider. They tell us that BCDF is a parallelogram. Now, as soon as it's a parallelogram, we know a few things. One, that the opposite sides are parallel. Two, the opposite sides are equal. Right, now, so we know that FD is equal to BC. Then they tell us that AF is equal to FB, which means they're telling us that this line here is equal to this line, which immediately now we can see, but you know what? And this is going to equal to this. Now, what do we need to prove? We need to prove that DE is equal to EF. Now, in geometry, they give you nothing for nothing. If they gave us that AF is equal to FB, then that means we are going to use it. Now, if you look at the triangle, this triangle here, AEF and this triangle here, which is EDC. You would have that F1 is equal to D. Why? F1 is equal to D. Because they are forming alternate angles. But how do I know they are forming alternate angles? Because I know that FB is parallel to DC. Why is it parallel? Because they told me that it's a power. Then I know that AF is going to equal to DC. How do I know that AF is equal to DC? Because it was given that AF is equal to FB. But also that FB is equal to DC. Why is FB equal to DC? Opposite sides of a palm are equal. So now that is two things that I've got. Then look at this. What can you tell me about E1 and E3? They are equal because they are vertically opposite. Therefore, the triangle AFE and the triangle DEC are congruent. 
these two triangles are congruent. Why are they congruent? Because I got an angle, angle side. Now, if they congruent, remember, as soon as you can deduce they congruent, then you can make the following deduction, that the remainder angles are equal and the remainder sides are equal. So you can tell me now that angle A is equal to angle C1. Angle A is equal to angle C1. But if angle A is equal to angle C1, then also side FE is equal to side ED. Right, that is another form of rider that they can give you. Thank you for watching.